Hey guys, welcome to this week's tip video. We'll see how it goes because the snake is driving me crazy already. Uh, now she'll probably sit still and make me look stupid, but she's been being a real pain in the ass. Uh, one of my ultra females produced by uh, Josh Ortiz of Herptofauna by Josh Ortiz. Uh, really, really cool looking ultra. Uh, a little on the small side, which is mostly my fault. Uh, I slow grow everything and I've probably slow grown her a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, so I have increased her intake a bit. It's all about adjusting, but she's very healthy, very alert, very nice looking snake I look forward to using. Uh, for the tip video, um, I was in some groups this weekend. There's a lot of people talking about heating options between heat tape and radiant heat panels and how do you heat a PVC cage, how do you heat racks, all this stuff. Now, I already did a video on thermostats, so I'm not going to really get into those much. But obviously, no matter what heating source you're using, you should be using a thermostat. doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and a good quality thermostat at that, as that video will discuss. So if you scroll back into the tip section or go to my tip playlist, uh, you can find that video on uh, the thermostats. I use Herpstat. You know, VE also has some pretty good stuff uh, and a few others. But definitely do your research on those and make sure you buy a piece of equipment that's going to properly not only run your heating source, but protect your animals' lives. So on heating options, uh, it's going to vary based on your situation. And so when it comes to racks and the difference in belly heat and back heat, uh, there's a couple of differences that you're going to want to know. Obviously, heat rises. So if you have belly heat, you're going to get more heat into the tub uh, that way than you are through back heat. Now back heat is going to be safer because if there is a malfunction, obviously no matter how much that heats up, as we said, heat's going to rise. So some of that's going to get out of there. Not as much is going to go into the tub. Whereas if you have a malfunction on belly heat, uh, it's much more likely to, you know, catch a tub on fire or something like that, which is why those thermostats and good thermostats are important. Uh, so we limit the risk on any issues there. Uh, so, with back heat, I do have some racks. Actually, my hatchling racks uh, are back heat, but I run an ambient temperature controlled room. So my room temperature is already at the minimum requirements of the snakes that I keep in there. Uh, so I do have multiple species in there, but my main room where my short tails are, I keep that room 80 to 82. So then, you know, sometimes it'll sink down to 78, 79 when it's real cold at night or something. Um, you know, depending on where the tub is in the room or what cage, whatever it is. Uh, so I don't have to worry about really creating an ambient temperature in the cage. The room does that. So all I'm using that heat tape for, uh, in those racks is a hot spot. So back heat works in that situation because you're only really trying to raise the, the heat up maybe one to two, maybe three degrees over what the ambient is, uh, in that spot. And so you'll notice after a meal, the babies might go and sit next to that part of the tub. Whereas normally they'll be on the other end of the tub, you know, when they're not digesting food or in a shed cycle or something. Uh, so back heat definitely is good in that situation. Now on the contrary, if that same room was, you know, my living room and it was only 64 degrees, back heat's not going to cut it in that situation. Maybe you'll get the ambient in that tub up to like 70, 72 if you really crank that. But the higher you have to crank your heat tape, uh, you know, the more concern there is that something could happen or catch on fire. So you want to be able to use the minimum amount that you need to achieve your goals. And so in that case, I would definitely recommend belly heat. So if you're unsure and you're trying to decide between the two, belly heat is the more, um, you know, the safer option or the more, uh, it's going to cover more options for you, more variable situations. So if you don't know, or if you're going to be moving and you're not sure you're going to be able to heat a whole room, then uh, belly heat is, is safer for you. Same when you look at rack styles, as far as do you want open side or closed side. Uh, open side is better if you're in an ambient situation because it's gonna allow the room temperature to circulate through there better. Whereas closed sides is gonna be better if you're in a colder room situation where you wanna retain that heat. Um, and also as just like a little hack, if you are in a situation where you're in a colder environment and your rack's having trouble, you can put some insulation on the, you know, outside of the rack and the top of the rack just to help hold in a little bit more heat. Uh, you don't want to sacrifice ventilation, but you do want to make sure that obviously you're, you're achieving the proper temperature. And as I said, she's probably going to sit still now after she was a jerk before, make me look stupid. Uh, now, when it comes to heating PVC cages, I'll see a lot of people go, oh yeah, heat tape is fine. 
and it can be fine depending on your situation. But no matter how much heat tape you have in there, it's only going to be able to affect the ambient temperature so much, uh, especially while maintaining a proper hot spot. So if you have a four by two PVC cage, and as I said, it's in that, you know, 64 degree living room, then you're going to have a hell of a time getting that ambient temperature up to 80 degrees in that four by two cage. Uh, Cause now you've got to raise the temperature 16 degrees uh, and you don't want your hot spot, you know, for something like a short tail to really be over like 84, 85. Uh, and you're just not going to achieve that with heat tape. It's just not going to work. Uh, so in that case, a radiant heat panel makes more sense. Uh, and you have to make sure that the radiant heat panels are sized correctly. They sell different sizes. Uh, in some cases, you might need two in one cage, uh, depending how much you're trying to up your temperature and depending on what kind of ambient versus hot spot you're looking for, what kind of gradient you're looking for. Uh, like my big female white lip has two radiant heat panels in her cage. I don't need to use two year round, but once in a while I do need them both on because the room that she's in stays a little bit cooler because I have my Australian stuff in there. And so I need to keep her ambient appropriately without getting her too hot of a hot spot. Um, so in that six foot enclosure, I do have two heat panels, two different sizes. The larger one is designed to obviously keep up the ambient and everything like that. And then the smaller one is when I need to create a hot spot. Uh, I have that one available. Uh, for heat panels, I use pro products. I wouldn't use anything else. Uh, this is not like a paid endorsement or whatever. They don't even know who I am, but they're really great. And I hate talking on the phone, but call them if you're going to order. Uh, they'll go over some things with you. You want to have information together. They're going to want to know what species you're putting in the cage. They're going to want to know cage dimensions, including the height. So you can't just tell them four by two because the height's going to matter on how that cage is going to heat. Uh, so you're going to want the, the cage material, the dimensions, and then they're going to want to know the ambient temperature in your room. And you're going to want to give them as accurate information as possible. And then they'll size it for you. Like they're the ones that suggested putting two in with the white lip because what I needed to do, I was going to get too hot of a hot spot to get my ambient right. Uh, and the white lip wouldn't, wouldn't tolerate that. She would be even meaner than she is. So they are definitely great for that. Um, you know, they may not always answer the phone first try. You know, I think it's mainly one person, uh, but he's really awesome. So be patient with that, but I definitely would recommend that. Uh, they're just great panels. Uh, no matter how much you heat them up, you can stick your hand right to them. It doesn't burn you. So if your snakes happen to go up against them, you don't really have to worry about them getting hurt. Obviously, if it's on a, a thermostat, like I said, that's the most important thing. But even on regulated, those things don't really get that hot. Um, they, they get hot, but not, not crazy hot. But you still should, should regulate it so that your snake's not uh, in conditions that are too much for it. going to kill it or stress it out. Uh, and so the radiant heat panel, panels are definitely your better bet, like I said, in the cooler ambient environment. Uh, they just heat a little bit better and whatever else. Now, when we talked about the belly heat before, uh, another thing that I'll mention, certain Borneo short tails, Ultra can be one of them. Uh, some of the Blue Ghost stuff does a lot better with belly heat than anything else uh, for digesting food. Uh, Blue Ghost especially can have regurgitation issues uh, if they don't have belly heat. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind, you know, what you're keeping and how they're going to do best. There are some species that are going to do best heated from above, some below, some ambient, some not. Uh, so you really want to tailor your keeping to whatever you're keeping. That's why I have more than one snake room. You know, my Australian stuff can't get cool enough in the short tail room when I need to cycle them for breeding. Uh, and so I have them in separate rooms. Now I can have short tails in the Aussie room and I just have to provide them with a little additional heat. Uh, which I do. I have a rack of short tails in there. Uh, so the room, you know, this time of year, I have the room at like 70 degrees, sometimes cooler at night. Uh, and then I just, I have belly heat on that rack and I have them set for, you know, like an 84 degree hot spot. Raises their ambient up in there. You know, that's a smaller rack. It's 28 quart. So it raises their ambient up fine. Where no matter where they're sitting, they're sitting in the high 70s or low 80s, which is what I want. Uh, so those are some of the heating options. And like I said, it's going to vary based on your individual situation. Uh, radiant heat panels in as far as PVC caging goes is probably your best bet if you're unsure of, you know, the conditions you're going to have always. If you know, you're now you live down south and you're not an AC freak like I am and, you know, you keep your house at 75 or 78, then you can definitely use heat tape in, uh, in a four by two PVC cage for a short tail and get to where you want to go. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a lot harder uh, if you're in a cooler situation. 
So definitely something to be aware of. Uh, if you guys have any questions on this stuff, obviously, uh, you know, comment below and I will uh, get to those. Uh, comments are always welcome. You know, make sure you like, subscribe, do all that. If you like the video, share the video, share the channel, uh, and we'll keep going. Uh, I'm going to shoot another uh, Meet the Collection video, so I have that ready. I'm actually shooting on Sunday today um, for these, and I'm listening to YouTube in the background, so it's a little bit of YouTube inception. Uh, but yeah, and also, pitch me some ideas for videos you'd like to see. I can't promise I can do everything that you ask, but I do have some stuff in the works, and then uh, I will try to get to subjects that you want. Uh, stuff that can be educational, stuff that maybe is more advanced. Whatever it is, go over it and uh, drop it on there and we'll get to it if I can. All right. We'll see you later. I'm going to eat my dinner.